if you ever wanted to pitch, if you just want to figure out how to get your story told, you're in the right place, you've got the right people, you can have made a better choice. For those who don't know, I am Neil. I am a manager for Animated Current Series at Nickelodeon Animation. I'm Carrie Kim. I started out um, my career working as um, a receptionist at um, Saturday Night Live, and I worked my way up. I actually left college and went straight to New York to try to be in the fine arts world. Um, I had that wide-eyed view of art could change the world the way all my favorite magazines and books were telling me. I've been at Nickelodeon on and off since 2009. I started as an intern. I then spent some time over at Fox. I spent some time at DreamWorks. But most of my, my career has been at Nickelodeon. And I can honestly say of everywhere I've worked, it has been the most enjoyable. Um, I feel like I've grown the most. I've been empowered through uh, my time at Nickelodeon. And Nickelodeon, you know, you hear it everywhere, but it feels like a family. <laughs> Right. In addition to my time at Nickelodeon, I've had a passion for diversity and inclusion as long as I've had my career. I've always, it's always been so important to me that everyone has the opportunity to make their dream come true, whatever that is. For me, it's important that everyone is included and is able to get to the table and from there become the best that they can. You know, I grew up in the Midwest. I'm a Midwest girl from Mi Michigan. I went to college out in um, in the East Coast at uh, Hofstra University and I studied film and TV. And so I always felt like I was a um, true New Yorker um, and spent a lot of time working my way up in the New York industry. Sometimes your career kind of takes you on different paths. Um, and I not only worked at SNL, I started out at Nickelodeon. This is my second tour at Nickelodeon. And so I was at Nickelodeon for a few years. I worked in the um, live action scripted space for a period of time. I did startups. I learned how to make games and EP virtual worlds. Um, and that's how I fell into animation and my true love of animation. The biggest amazing arc of my career was I really got to come back to Nickelodeon, my true love, and work back in animation. But I also realized that I unexpectedly became well-rounded and I learned that great story and great character transcends the medium. So it doesn't matter what form it could be from games all the way to, you know, unscripted reality shows. And just like Carrie said, um your career taking you to a lot of different places and having a lot of different perspectives. That's also been my experience too. I am also from the Midwest, from Michigan. Um, that's a coincidence. Yes, um, we didn't know each other, I swear. <laughs> and I looked around and all the things that I was obsessed with and I realized TV, especially kids TV, um, really can affect the world and affect when you give kids stories in a really interesting way, but with, with you know, with uh, nutrients in there, you know, it stays with them and helps create better people for life. And that's why I got really excited about Kids TV. And I ended up going to Cartoon Network out of Atlanta, Georgia, when everything was out, was out of Atlanta back in the day, right after Powerpuff launched. And I was there for almost a decade until Flapjack was launching. And then I wanted a broader experience and actually went over to London to work for Disney as they were creating their their XD network out of um, London. And it was really wonderful and eye-opening because we didn't have a studio but we worked with a lot of different studios and countries across Europe and Canada working on partnership series. Um, so that, that really, and that job was more current series over what Neil does now overseeing shows in production. And that was a great way to, to look at the universality of stories and character and things that respond to everyone that everyone can, can understand. And the big learning I had from there was the more specific you get in this situation can make it even more universal because everyone can relate to that, but through a specific situation, it makes it even more indelible. And I, that was really exciting. And then I came over to LA for the first time working for Disney out of the TV animation group. So it's super exciting to be here. So I've actually done pr programming, scheduling, buying shows, working on partnership series, then full-fledged development. Today is a very, very special day because I actually put on deodorant and it's been weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you stink! So let me just dive in because I think we're gonna break up these sort of sections into two areas and that is prepping before you walk in the door to tell your pitch. And Daniel, I'm gonna to throw to Daniel to talk about it pitch itself and a little bit of the storytelling elements that are key to your pitch. So I think you need to know who you're pitching to, know your audience and know your network, right? Because Disney is not looking for the same stuff 
that Nickelodeon is looking for as either Cartoon Network or Netflix or now HBO Max. I feel like Apple, I have to make a long list now. They're increasing, which is great because there's more animation. People want more animation. Yeah. Finally, um, so I think you need to research and it doesn't mean you have to call blindly and ask what they're looking for, but I think you need to know what the content is on their, the network. Um, if you can find out, look in the trades about what they're developing, uh, because the last thing you want to do is go in with a pitch and sometimes it happens and that's okay where they already have something that they've announced. What is our three major, major pillars? And I think the first one is comedy, comedy, comedy. You guys know when you come here that it's going to, you're gonna laugh. Whether it's through comedy action, comedy adventure, just a plain sitcom, Nickelodeon brings that authentic kid perspective that's gonna make you laugh. <laughs> you know, everything that we create comes from a kid's perspective and from their emotional ranges, from their from their growing up, the good, the bad, the ugly. We tell stories about the imperfect, perfect kid um, because it's all of that. And then the other element is that Nickelodeon will forever be gender neutral. So we're gonna be going after boys and girls equal parts. Make a connection with someone at that network, right? It, it could be agent managers. I know you guys are all starting out. That's very, very hard, but it could be a friends of a friends. Making like blind emails, going out, um, going, asking for a co coffee, reaching out um, and never giving up. You never know who's sitting next to you and what opportunity to could be working out for you. I was procrastinating when I was in college trying to get my internship. I had one more credit I needed to do and I ended up signing up in New York for a pilot and it was a Dave Patel pilot where he was like a guy that lives in his mom's basement and his best friend was a puppet. I can clearly tell that maybe it didn't go to series, but <laughs> um, it was definitely funny, but I, worked my butt off and I became the friend of the production manager. Well, it turns out she was just doing this as an, um, a side job because she was about to start as a receptionist at SNL and that set my path. So just remember, you never know who you're talking to and always don't be afraid to make connections and talk to them, right? Because it could be anything that will lead you to the, your next journey. I was appalled when someone said this to me. Uniqueness is overrated, right? Newness is overrated. I was like, what are you talking about? Um, but the <laughs> truth is, yeah, it's true. A lot of things have been done. Most things have been done. But it's your specific take on an idea or on a design or anything that gets me excited. Like, that's what makes it a people business, not an AI business. It's like your background, your history, your point of view in the world is what makes this story interesting. When you're making your show or work on any project, be thinking about what is this project trying to say? Like, what is what do you want to say with this show? There's a lot of great fun. But if you all, we all know these shows that are just a lot of fun to watch or kind of fun to watch, but then when it's off there, you don't really think about that much. You might think about a laugh that was in there, but it doesn't stick to your ribs. And at Nick, we're really trying to create shows that stick to your ribs, which means after you stop watching it, there's, there's something that resonates with you. Like the theme of SpongeBob could be optimism wins out over everything. Like you have Squidward always as the empty thing pushing against it, but SpongeBob trust and optimism it'll it'll save the day and that's the way you should be any show you think of that really sticks with you what is it trying to say and one thing i've heard through a few different jobs is the t-shirt test like would you wear this character on a t-shirt and it's not you know it's not to sell t-shirts although that, that could be outcome of a great show it's more why would you wear spongebob versus um, mabel versus buttercup or blossom you know on your shirt like what is that saying about you today and your point of view on life and that's kind of thing we'll be looking for when you come in to pitch us. Like, yes, is this show kid relatable? Is it a kid's eye view of the world? Like it's got it, Nick is always like kid approved. If the kids aren't gonna like this, we're, we're not gonna make it. It's not like good for kids television. We're trying to represent the vast audience out there and reflect back to them, the messy kid, the flawed kid that can make mistakes, but he's still on their side and they, they're still redeemed like the great fairy tales of, of history. You know, you can get in trouble and get out, get out of it. So. These are the things when you're actually pitching us an idea of what we'll be looking for from a developer's eye. First and foremost, don't come in and scattershot a big idea where we're trying to figure out, parse out, okay, what's the core of this idea? What is the idea? Think of it as like the tip of an iceberg where we know your show, you've thought so deep about like Avatar, it's so deep, but that core top when you're introducing it to a viewer or an executive who has to keep 
arguing it up the ladder a little bit, like pitching your show in a top line way. What is the show really about? What's the core relationship? What is the core conflict? And what, what can you expect to happen? That's all we'll be looking for. So you don't have to come in having thought through everything. Think of a pitch almost as a conversation starter where you're introducing a few core traits that we're gonna be talking back and forth on. And all that means is also, before you come in and pitch us, make sure you practice it, make sure you pitch it to your friends that aren't nice to you, that will give you strong critical feedback in your best interest, you know, when they don't understand thing or something could be better, be open to that feedback. I had a former boss um, at Disney who was at Pixar before and they talked about their, their story lab or their sto where you have to show your stuff in front of all your colleagues. And they said it was almost like when you present your work and it's never finished, you're never comfortable about it, it's never the right place, but it's like you, you present your work as, as standing there with your arms cut off and dropping your pants, because that's what it feels like. But you have to just be open to that vulnerability when you're talking about your projects. So I'm just saying, before you come in the door, be comfortable with your idea enough that you can talk to, to your friends, get the feedback that will be um, uh, constructive, you know? And then, so when you come to us, when we stop you and ask you questions along the way, it's not like it throws you off. It shouldn't be a presentation as much as laying out, this is it, and then make it a conversation. So the main things that you need in a pitch when you're talking about an idea itself is, okay, what's that North Star? Like, what's your log line or your top line? Or this is a show about this character, with this character doing this against this conflict. So like, what's your log line? What's your elevator pitch, the tip of the iceberg, the keyhole that you want us to see it through? Like it, it's almost like you're, it really behooves you to help force us to see, to frame your idea through your lens. So we, we're thinking about the same way you are. And then the other thing we're gonna be asking about is like, why are you telling this story? Like it could just be you fell in love with the story, but we're also looking for the, the personal elements or what you're really excited about, what type of shows you wanna work on or what really influenced you or what kind of storytelling you like that helps us get an idea of the tone and what you can bring to it versus somebody else bringing something to it. Like we want to get to know a little bit about you as well as a pitch. A great idea can be made pretty mediocre, just go off the rails if you don't have the right type of person making it. Because some people aren't great at you know horror, some people aren't great at comedy, right? Um, but an, an all right idea can be made, can take it to the really next level with the right person behind it. So it's also the, we want to know you as well as your pitch, if that makes sense. Another thing we'll be looking at your pitch is, when we look at any pitch, is why this story now? And this also goes to the franchise side of things. Because like everybody, we're looking at our library to um, bring back things that are beloved. And, but we also look at why is this not just a cash-in? I mean, it should be a cash-in. It should be like, what about this story resonates now today the way it needs to be retold or reimagined, you know? With your story, is like, how does this not feel dated? Or why is this really going to resonate two years from now, three years from now, when it hits the, hits the air. What are the core characters in their relationship we'll be looking at? Who are the characters and what, and that relationship will usually relate to the theme of what you want to say with the show. What one character wants to do, what's the obstacle. And that's gonna get us excited because that's who we're gonna to want to tune in with. Like we want to visit our friends every day. That's who why we want to tune in with them. Or we want to see ourselves in that character. Um, and go through that that journey as well. So be a little specific without being overly detailed. It's just a little bit of getting us a little bit of flavor without getting lost in the weeds of details. Sometimes if you want to use comparisons or tone, like like it's like if you see it as a, a mood board of these type of shows are my influences or these types of characters, that does help because that gets us in our head about the flavor that you're specifically going for. Have a few sample storylines, which can just be log lines. Like if you have one story that can talk about a little bit more in a beta detail, like five sentences and a couple more, just one or two sentences, that gets us in our head, okay, these are the types of stories they wanna say with this world, with these characters, and then we can kind of get off and running and starting to have a conversation. A lot of it is timing. Um, a lot of it is we have a lot of shows in development. Everyone has a lot of shows in development. There's a lot of shows being made, so it has to fit gaps that we don't necessarily have. We don't wanna develop two of the same type of things. So it's also, it's also being at the right place at the right time. So it's good to talk to a lot of different studios as well. This is a long career in this community. No matter where you work, you want to be two things at the very least. You want to be reliable. Like when you, you can hit your deadlines most of the time. You know you're going to do what you say you're supposed to do or they ask you to do if it's reasonable. And then just be nice to everyone uh, to the side of you, below you, above you. Because it's a long career, but it's also a small community and everyone talks and we all want to work with people 
in these long hours, these long marathons at a sprint place with people that are genuine and um, good to be around. I love you very, 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 very. What happens when you get the meeting? Oh my gosh, you don't need a massive Bible. You don't need a, it totally fleshed out. Um, it'd be nice to have a little deck um, um, or a one or two page, uh, two to three page sort of treatment describing what all of those key points are. Art is not a requirement, but if you're a designer and you have a designer and you're not a writer, then lay into what your gift is, what your skill is. Um, and we've taken pitches from board artists that have pitched an entire board telling the story of the series. We've taken, um, we've, we've pick up, gone into development arts that are just character designers that just really had fleshed out in a design or in a comic storytelling format that made sense to us that we wanted to develop with. And then on the writing side, you don't need any art. We'd rather have no art than bad art. So don't pull stuff off the web. <laughs> Um, and mood boards are good. We like mood boards. If you feel like you need that to just help you describe your story, that's great. In the process of development, um, the evolution of how you're gonna see your story from the moment you pitch all the way to what it ends up needing to be for that network. Platform. <laughs> um, that brand, that platform, is that um, all of that can change. So don't get married to your designs, don't get hung up on your words because you will also have an emotional evolution on the arc of trying to figure out what your show, what your show is. So you're in the room, take a breath, don't hide, don't be afraid. Even that person, no matter how stiff they are on the other side of the room is rooting for you because they wanna have a show too. They wanna have a hit show just as much as you do. So if you fumble, if you make a mistake, if there's a technology issue, that is okay. Practice, practice, practice. Prepare that your pitch can be pitched under 30 minutes. We didn't talk about this. Yeah. So, I think that you need to practice with your friends so that it's tight in the window. Um, unless, you know, listen, it, there's no deadline. Usually pitches are blocked up for an hour, but you, and especially if execs are asking you a lot of questions. It's true, it's true. He's but giving days, me the eyeballs. Well, because our, usually our days are so stacked and you're running from thing to thing. If yeah. You wanna have it within 20, 25 minutes so that you can leave the room for discussion. I think it's important that you keep nudging until you get feedback. If it's a pass, it's it's a lot of times not the quality of your work or your project. It's um, sometimes a lot about being at the right time and at the right place or what is on the other person slate or how does that fit within there's a lot of factors within your pitching um, and I think it's important that if you need to get and would like to get additional feedback don't afraid to ask um, but I think you know on our side we try to give as much feedback as we can when we pass on stuff um, and then if you do get picked up for development that's where the real work starts nothing ever walks in the room fully fleshed out or baked so that's where we get really into it. I think that the most important things are be reliable. Um, if you say you're gonna do something, follow through, follow up, be persistent, very key, be polite, be kind, and um, don't ever give up. Keep expanding your network. Keep reaching out to people because you just never, never know. Be interested in life. Uh, it doesn't have to be animation. Like every, what I love about, what I love about animation specifically, it's, it is the best of all art fields because it takes every single form of art into it between movement, design, timing, music, um, acting, voice acting. And so be a student of life and watching people, watching how things move, watching it, looking at all types of storytelling through video games, literature, movies. Don't just look at cartoons, you know, whatever you're a fan of, you can go deep in different areas because it'll, it'll all come back into what you, what your work is no matter what you're doing on a show. Reach out to all those associations that you're part of, those groups that you're part of, Black and Animated, you know, Women in Animation. There are so many ways to, to connect. Um, I think that if you have a friend that's in the industry or you have another friend in the industry, ask them if they know anybody that's in particular that you want to reach out. And always, you know, feel free to just ask for 
a 15 minute Zoom coffee, a third, you know, a 20 minute Zoom coffee can make the world of difference just to get to know people. A lot of us are introverts in this industry. And so you might be like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I don't want to bother somebody. I don't want to mess with them, this and that. Especially at Nickelodeon, people love to talk about themselves. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you want and the to work. Yeah. yeah, and work, of course, yes. But, like uh, what I did. It, that, well, like, exactly, be, like, as Daniel said, be a fan and show that you're a fan. If you see somebody doing what you love to do, you can reach out to them. And if they say no to a meeting, then there's 10 other people who are also creators, who are also doing things, who are so excited. I love talking to people getting into the industry. I love sharing my story and trying to empower and get people excited about what we do so that we can keep having what we do. What I love about kids animation too is that people are just normal people, which means they're very accessible. And you can reach out to them, you can direct message them, you can share your portfolio, you can send just a draw, fan art drawing. And a lot of times people will connect. It might not be the top of the show people if they get a lot of people coming at them, but just go through the credits, look at that. I love that show, I wanna know who that art director or the character design lead is. Let me reach out to that person. Or I love that episode. Who was the storyboard artist that wrote on that episode? Reach out to that person and get to get a good crew of people at your age coming in at your level because as everyone gets more and more shows, then you have your connections. Oh, they're on this show now. Maybe I can get on that show with them if they think I'm right. So it's also just getting to know people and getting on people's radar so they can reach out to you even if it's just 10 hours of design work or it's like, hey, can you do... Um, punch up revisions on this thing. Just getting to know people on the art side, I think is really important. When you come to pitch us, yeah, very rarely do people come fully formed. Like I know this show is perfect out of the gate. Usually you kind of have to go around the paces a few times on some shows to learn what works and what doesn't work. Um, being an artist really at the end of the day is just being a problem solver, you know, trying to make things work. And so once you've had that story that doesn't work or you've, you've gone down dead, dead ends, had to double back, that's only going to make you better when you have your own project, you know? So the couple of creators are like, I'm a failure. I haven't got my own show yet. And I'm almost 30. That's not the way to look at it. the way to look at it is all the experience you're gaining. So when you get your own show, you'll be, you'll be ready. It's going to be even better. Getting a show is making like 35 choices a day that are intractable and then moving on. Otherwise the, just, the production will fall apart. So just being ready by the time you're in, in that position. If you look at like Dan and Swampy from Phoenix and Ferb, they pitched that show for 15 years. They were, way experience before they got their first show. Um, just don't don't rush, just make every day a learning day. You know what I mean? I know all of us set like our goals in life, right? And what our what what our expectations of ourselves are. And I think setting time around that is really hard, and especially being an artist um, in the industry. Um, and to, you know, I don't know what the percentage is of how many shows get picked up out of some, it's like, very, very tiny. It's like batting average should. odds. They're not, they're, yes. they're not always yes. in your favor. But what the experience is, is exactly that is learning your experience, being your fan and connecting with your friends and, and, and learning and re understanding their strengths. Um, because, you know, going after someone that has had five shows, was a showrunner on Facebook that's had five shows under your belt. Yes, they sh you should reach out to them. But who is going to really help you grow and learn is also your friends that are at the same level as you. I was an intern at 29. I started my career when I was almost 30. And I'm 40 now and loving it. And, stu and I still want to have a show. I still want to create and do new things. So don't ever think it's too late. Don't ever think that you can't do anything. This, the animation world is so open. We're doing a, sh a shorts program, the new version of the intergalactic shorts program. Where we're making seven minute fully animated pieces and we're doing a chunk of them. Our art director, she's a first time art director, but she was a career architect before she went into art directing. It's like people change careers yeah. all the time. It only makes you better because you're bringing back experiences from what you did before you got into this. And don't, don't wait for someone to ask you for ideas in all honesty. When you feel like you want to pitch, start yeah. knocking on doors. I know that it could be daunting on the world building, and that's part of why we said you don't have to have a Bible. Just go piecemeal, do sections, story, character, right? And, um, and, and then the world, um, and the theme, and the tone. When you feel confident and you've rehearsed a pitch that's, you know, 30, 20 minutes long and you're ready, you should be able to set a call, you know, set, try to get a pitch um, with an executive. If you are not, do not have representation, there are a few steps that you have to take a ahead of time. So there's a submission release form you have to do. 
um, sign that, and then we can schedule a pitch with you. I don't. You don't have to toll forever, but I would go a couple rounds on a show just to get your 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 feet under you. Because partly is like if the show does go, you get a series. Your skill set at that point will determine what you're doing on that series. Because if you're kind of new to it. Um, you'll be more of a consulting producer, but if you work more and you can actually own a part of the role, like you could be art director, you could be story editor, along with, you know, part of the top of the show, you'll be able to do more. But also don't feel like you have to write it all yourself. An old boss used to tell me, like even Steven Spielberg doesn't write his own movies, he always hires a scriptwriter. You'll have someone that's, per that's really experienced in that role, so you don't have to do every role on the show. You know, you'll have a partner, yeah. you'll be able to build a team around you. So it's more just leaning into your core, story and character and relationship. We're gonna make a deal with you, option your show. That can take a little while no matter where you're at. But then honestly, it is, it's gonna be bespoke for e each kind of show. Usually people develop towards these days like an a animatic, like a fully mixed voice posted animatic. So that's like working on the designs with you, working on the writing. Um, if you don't want, if you can't do everything yourself, we, we team you up with people, you find the people. Um, and it's really every step of the way, make sure we're working on a show that feels unique and specific to you, but also will also fit wherever you're developing it. I like to think about Nick as like a, a messy playground where you have kids from all over there and they all meet up. They don't like everybody, they don't like every show, but they want to see what's going on there, but it's always like for kids. And then, but honestly, we're working with you, working with you on the script, every step of the way towards an animatic, which we'll try to pitch out for a series pickup. <laughs> We might do an animation test. We'll definitely want to have um, directional designs, like style frames, to show what the show would look like. And we'll want to know what types of stories you want to see. So it might be a little pitch bible, but it's really working on that animatic as a proof of concept. And then generally, there's a few different things that go towards the decision. It's definitely our instincts and guts. It's like the, the larger companies do each division, feel like, oh, this is going to feel good for what we need or what we'd like to see this. And then there's a little bit of focus group testing. And we take a few different ideas from different areas to get a full sense of, okay, what works, what doesn't. Because even with that pilot, if it goes to series, there's going to be adjustments based on what we learned, you as well, the creator as well as the development exec, what we learned through the process. Because the cool thing about animation, it's like a different beast at every stage. A script, mm -hmm. okay, and now I know what it is. We got the foundation right. And then at board, you're like, okay, what? Okay, totally now this changed. is what it is. <laughs> then you get the animatic blues with that first cut. You're like, wait a minute, this isn't what it was. And then you get that to the place where you totally want it is. And then you look back and they're like, okay, it kind of went on this journey. Maybe we want the show to be more like this. Maybe this didn't quite resonate so well. It is a R&D process, as, which is what development is. So by the time you do get to series, you have a wealth of what worked and what didn't and what you want to do. Once you're on that train, that's a move in. Oh, it's funny is all of that is leading up to us having to pitch the show for series, right? That's so true. you're working really hard to pitch it, but we're now helping you build it out so that it could have a hundred episodes, right? Yes. And in many ways it's gathering all that material so that we can also help you tell the story and we can tell the story to the greater, you know, platform. We accept pitches from international creators, and so it doesn't need to be U.S. creators. It could be anywhere, um, yeah. because a great show is a great show. We buy from all over, and we partnership all over, and we work with our international Nick Animation as well. So there's a lot of different ways we can make shows. I think it's uh, many of the things that we have recommended that you did when you're preparing your pitch is be a connector, be open, um, be interested in connecting with new people, um, learning about storytelling, um, be interested in, this goes back to a lot of what Daniel talks about as being a fan of animation and different kinds of storytelling um, and really becoming a craftsman on what you think um, great, unique ways of telling stories. Because, you know, we take everything from episodic to serialized. Um, we are open to all, you know, genres, as long as they have comedy in it. And so I think becoming a fan um, and practicing and writing and doing coverage. Coverage is really important. Um, a lot of interns do that, but which is like taking a book or taking a pitch, and then uh, mostly it's a book. Taking a book or a script, um, a long script and um, writing a d short, brief description of it and then what your opinion is, which is very important, your recommendation. Really honing in on that, um, your writing skills and your 
descriptive skills and feedback skills. That's really important. Don't, you don't need to bring in phone core props when you see me in person and set them all up. You don't need to improv or sing at me. There was this great pitch at Disney, I won't say who it was, but um, he went and got some gunpowder because he, he had this great moment where he was like, I'm gonna show a mind explosion and he lit this gunpowder, but he did too <gasps> much and it like singed like people in the front row a little bit. Most pitches are totally chill and calm, and um, but sometimes you get a pass in the room. That's very rare, but because most of the time the exec wants to have gather all the information because there may be a surprise in the writing or the pitch packet. But sometimes you'll get some feedback in the room that may surprise you or you are not prepared for, and that is okay. But don't get angry or defensive because we're just trying to help you. Yeah, and don't get overly detailed. And also, um, if we ask you a question, okay, and then where is this going? What do you see happening? Say, you have to pick up the show before I can tell you. That doesn't help either. Think of it as where your partner, but also your first audience outside your head and your core team that's responding to things along the way. Um, that's like a dual thing that we're there for. So like, um, bring us into this time, but also know that we're responding in real time um, as an external, slightly disinterested audience, because the more it gets to be an audience, they can be more disinterested and be like, entertain me, you know? We, we have everything in development. We have a sitcom that's about families. We have sitcoms that are friends. We have comedy adventures that are interdimensional. We have musicals. We have spooky, funny shows. You know, we also have book adaptations like Big Neat. We've announced that as well. So there's a wide variety um, of genres, but again, all of them have comedy and all of them have kids perspective and all of them are for both boys and girls. I used to say, I'll never do this type of pitch or that type of pitch, it just won't work. And then uh, twice has happened, twice I've made offers for those type of pitches. It's just, it's, it's when it's the right version of, of that, that thing. I think it depends on the show, right? And I think it depends on you as a creator, um, because you know going in that there's always going to be an open communication with you and your exec um, so that you know the expectations. And I think even when you pitch your show and it does go into development, it's our job to communicate to you what is important from the Nick brand that relates to your show um, and what are elements that we need to keep hitting if you want your show to go get picked up. It's always a work in progress. We always know that even after a show gets picked up, there's also more development. And that's true, it's, there, it's kind of an ongoing process and all kinds of things can affect it. You know, you find out that somebody uses the name that you've chosen for your character and that changes things. And then how does that impact? Mm -hmm. What are those like impact points down the line? What are those ripples? I guess at the end of the day, it's like what Carrie said, it's a true collaboration. And it's really, you, uh, you should go in with, uh, with understanding that's a partnership and that there will be discussions back and forth of what will serve the show best, what will be best for the network. Um, this also goes back to in the beginning where we say, do your research. If you have a show and an idea and you have certain parameters that you are sticking to, understand if that personality is a good fit for Nickelodeon versus a cartoon network or another studio, et cetera. Understand who, who you're talking to so that you can communicate your idea to them the best. If you have a show about you know, space warriors destroying planets, Disney's probably not gonna pick that up, you know? So just understand what you're walking into and what you're bringing to the table and how that relates to the space you're pitching in. Some advice that I got early on in my career is, um, you know, we all get into this, even as artists, we create these things that we wanna to present to the world. And at some point it becomes, it's, it's not ours anymore, right? It's, it becomes something that the, everyone can appreciate. And I think that's important to remember too. When you're going into the room, this will eventually be the world. And so it's good to know what, what things you think are essential to it and understand that when there, there are some things that you may need to let go or that when you have other minds in the room that they are going to improve these ideas too and be open to that. So, you know, uh, you know stand your ground and understand what, what the principles are around your show. 
but be open to what development is, and that is preparing the show to be delivered to our audience. And at the end of the day, just remember, it's a partnership. It's not about executives taking your thing and making it ours. It's really about the partnership because we want to work together. We're all artists that are trying to work together to create great content. We're making kids cartoons. Come on, this is the best job in the world.